What are they? Storage lockers. Oh my god, they're enormous. <laughs> Welcome back. This is our second episode, and today we're going to be talking about the Bavaria Nauta Tech 40 Open. Uh, this is a boat we hadn't really been focusing on, uh, but happened to be conveniently next door to the XS12 that we reviewed last week. Uh, and they actually share a fair amount in common, even though they're, they're kind of based on different design philosophies. Uh, the excess that we looked at last week looks like they're trying to sort of target the market that the Nauta Tech has been sitting in for mm -hmm. some time. The Nauta Tech um, has a lot of great things going for it, and both it and the 46 that were next, next to it. The more I've looked at the research and prepared for this video, um, the more I find that I really like these boats, even with their shortcomings. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect boat, and these certainly aren't perfect, but uh, they do have a lot going for them. So, um, let's start by, you know, going through the way we entered the boat, and we'll try and keep this a little more uh, focused this time instead of jumping all over the place. Uh, so let's start with the with the cockpit, the outside and the back, because that's where we entered from. Come on. Um, yeah. Do you would like to get the kids first in the ball? Sure. Yeah. You got. You got them. All right. Ready? James, you got this. Ready? Woo! <laughs> yeah. So the concept from Naughty Tech, that's why they call them open. It's yeah. giving yeah. more cockpits, so more outside area. Nathan, sit on your back. a little bit, little, a little less so inside. Yeah. All right. Okay. When we live in New York, it's the weather is not always at night. Right. On this point, they didn't take that option, but on the 46, you will see a rim running. Mm -hmm. And that rim runs all the way here. And you zip yourself completely in, this whole inside yeah. out. And you have a package that's clear, mosquito. I have it up the whole time. Yeah. And our air conditioning heater would blow and it would yeah. So this was really our living space. Yeah. And our air conditioning heater would blow and it would condition the space yeah. fine. So this was really our living space. Mm -hmm. The boat gets delivered with like this director chairs. Yep. I didn't even use them. On the 46 <laughs> we have this like boosters. And you can put the shoes and all the junk in, yeah. and it would have it standing around, and that's where the kids played and lived in the whole time. Yeah. Everywhere is like huge storages, uh, yeah. the live rafts yeah. would be kept on the there. Hmm. So there's a lot of storage everywhere. <laughs> so that's a closet, the system's Come here, here. kiddo. In our boat, I have here, I have a refrigerator. You got it? It's an option. Awesome job! Yeah. So as we entered the, the boat from the back, um, there's a nice wide, flat sugar scoop, um, which is a little bit surprising from one perspective because it does, the boat itself does have a very narrow hull to it below the waterline, uh, but it has some hard chines that stick out on the sides of each mm -hmm. hull above the waterline to keep the spray down and provide a little more lift and to give more space in the boat uh, without having a lot of wetted area. Uh, so there's nice wide flat sugar scoops in the back but there's only about one step up which is kind of nice in one respect. It's easy to get in and out of the boat uh, but I was worried a little bit as soon as I saw it about how much water might come over the back if the seas got rough. But as soon as you turn left behind the, the helm station uh, there is a drain built into the floor right there that we haven't seen on other boats. Uh, it would catch a lot of the water that might splash up that way. And if anything did get past that, there's the traditional trough right in front of the saloon door, uh, and it's very wide. Uh, it's full width of the door, as the door is also very wide in this boat, uh, which is a good segue to uh, what this boat seems to be all about. Uh, as our salesperson had described it, the open concept is just that is that it's intended to be a very open space inside the boat and a blending of the indoor and outdoor spaces. Uh, 
and I think they've done that pretty well, even on such a small boat. You mm -hmm. step onto the back of that, it is a really large outdoor cockpit area. Uh, there are full-length benches on both sides that run nearly to the to the uh, saloon wall, um, and there's a, a full-length table in there, and there's plenty enough room, even if you had some chairs set up uh, alongside the table, because the the, the port side bench isn't near the table. It's so wide back there. There's a big walking space past there. So if you were going to seat people at the table all the way around, you would have to have some folding chairs. And, and she mentioned that that was something that the, the boat might come with. It was a couple of folding chairs to go out there. So, but even if you had people sitting in those chairs and those chairs set up, you could still easily walk past that, that table out there. The boat has two outboard helms. I'm not entirely sold on them, but I I can definitely see the advantages, uh, you know, when you're pulling into a dock uh, or when you're uh, out actively sailing, you can see, you know, straight ahead, there's nothing in front of you, no cabin, unless you want to look to the far left. Um, but on this boat, the windows in the saloon are so big and tall, you can see straight through to the opposite diagonal corner uh, without a whole lot of interference. Um, that that was my take on the on the outdoor. What, what was your thought? So, again, with the dual helm stations, the the engine controls are only on the starboard side, so mm -hmm. not on the port side. So if you are docking, you have to keep that in mind. So not necessarily sold on the dual helm station. The covering for the dual helm was very, very narrow. Um, it was exactly the same width as the seat, so there's no overhang um, and no protection out there. So granted, you could be using the autopilot, um, but if you're actually outside, whether it's windy, super sunny, there's not a lot of shade um, or cover from the elements. So you're potentially getting wet out there as well, depending on what the spray and the wind is like. Um, I agree. The, co the uh, outside saloon area is enormous. Um, I would rather see on the other side of that table, instead of all that empty space to walk through and potentially folding chairs or chairs to stick in the center is to have an actual bench with additional storage down there like some of the other cats have. It seems like a waste of space to not have anything there and mm. then again not being able to have people seated all the way around that table. Yeah, especially uh, on such a small boat, more yep. storage would be good. The refrigeration in this boat is here. Uh, on my boat, I have a top-down refrigeration here. Mm -hmm. I use another, if you go down on this side, there's a wall with closets. Okay. I have big freezers there. You can also have a washer dryer. So there's a couple of options that yep. you can get from the factory, right? This boat, it, they didn't offer that. This boat is an owner's version. So yep. this is the then owner's side. Okay. And here we have a double cabin. Yeah, so from there, um, you know, we went inside, uh, and this is the weak point of this particular yacht. It's it's a small yacht, it's 39 feet, uh, so it's definitely at the smaller end of the, the cruising cat scale. Uh, and while I understand that they were trying to, you know, create this big open space, and they somewhat did, you know, when those, when those sliders are wide open, and they're really wide, I'm going to guess those are a good 8 feet wide when they're open. Um, you know, the, the line between indoor and outdoor is kind of blurred, but, you know, I can imagine when you've got the doors closed because of bugs or cold or whatever, uh, you know, if you had to bring people in f for whatever reason, that little salon space that they've got is pretty tight, and it feels, it just feels weird. <laughs> you know, it looks okay, you know, they've got everything in there, there's a, a reasonable galley, it's, it's a small stove, a small sink, a small fridge, um, but the nav station doubles as the dinette settee and everything. And it's it's a clever contraption. It folds and flip-flops and the table folds out and you can turn it into a, a little bed to uh, it's a little transformer. Um, but it's it's not really good at any of those things, I think. It, it's It's been shoehorned in there. Um, and there's not a lot of prep space in the kitchen. And it's not a u-shape at all it's just a linear galley for the most part it's got a bit of a bend to it where mm -hmm. the cooktop is there's nothing to support yourself on and it's right up against the companionway and across from there is a is another prep area it's you know facing forward under the windscreen is a you know probably a 12 to 18 inch uh, countertop but it, again maybe a quarter of that or a third of it is actually in 
the companionway stairwell. So if you're working over there, especially if you start pushing things over to the right, you know, a little slip and you're going to be putting the foot down into the, into the stairwell. So looking down from the top, you can kind of get an idea of what the space compromise looks like. Uh, I've laid the uh, Nautitech and the XS-12 uh, top views uh, side by side so that you can see where the, the front and back of the salon look like compared to each other. And you can see that the uh, rear bulkhead um, for the salon on the Nautitech is pushed forward, you know, nearly the width of the countertop of the excess. And similarly in the front, the usable space, uh, I'm, I'm calling that the back of the, the seating, uh, that's pushed back by, you know, maybe a foot. Uh, so you've lost, you know, somewhere in the order of uh, two and a half, three feet of saloon space because of the compromise of the the larger outdoor area uh, on top of a, a mast being pushed further uh, on the Nautitech. Um, there was um, super huge windows in there. That, that was... But they weren't vertical, so they did have nope. that slant. So if you're in the hotter climates, there's there's going to be an awful lot of sun coming through yep. those in those windows. And there were no shades. Nope. Um, and some of the I believe some of the windows were curved. <clears throat> I have to check that on the pictures. But I think the, the, corner the corners. windows were, were curved. So tough to put yep. shades up there. You'd have to put you know custom made you know cardboard or something. But they did have decent opening hatches in those forward windows they as did. well. So for breeze to get through. This one, because that indoor salon is so small, it also didn't have a U-shaped dinette. So it just had, think of your traditional camper or RV seating where you had the table in between and you had two bench seats almost. And it wasn't even a full full bench on one side. It was, nope. it was partial. It, the inner half side was fairly short. And you know, that would be your seat when it's turned into the nav station. Correct. And the, you know, the nav station electronics were minimal and just basically a chart plotter up on the top. And I think the radio or telephone setup was behind you if you're sitting in that seat. So you'd have to turn around to reach the handset. Um, but they, like I said, they, they got everything in there. It was just shoehorned a bit, um, really tight. And yeah. I, like, so that's, that to me is the shortcoming of the, of the boat. Because in general, it's, it's pretty nice. It is a lightweight boat, so we, you always got to keep that in the back of your head. A lot of choices here were made for weight as well. Um, but. Yeah, but I don't think it's a good option. If you were going to be full-time sailing, probably not going to be your first choice. There's not a lot of storage upstairs. There's no lip not or handhold on the kitchen countertop. So if you are underway and you're trying to prepare anything, even a quick simple lunch or beverage, there is nothing on that countertop to keep anything still. I think that um, one had a little bit of a bull nose on it, but it wasn't a lip. You know, it was, yeah, and there's not, like I said, there's... Pencil no, wouldn't roll off, but a bowl might. <laughs> there's nothing to hang on to, though. Yeah. Uh, and there's not a lot of storage and very small single um, basin sink in that kitchen as yeah. well. Uh, no dishwasher or anything like that. So you'd have to be conscious about mm. doing your dishes frequently, especially if you have a larger party. You're going to be... <laughs> it's going to take you a while yeah. to do them. And nowhere to put your television to watch our videos on it was right it was packed in there um the sink portion of the counter um the galley does face back and the sink portion of the counter mm -hmm. uh, is actually in the opening of the, the sliding doors Correct. so if you were preparing food uh facing backwards you you are for the, at least half of you facing the people the table is actually going to be on the side block by the door mm -hmm. so that's where people will probably be sitting but you you do see out into the uh, there are some nice LED strip lights that go the length of the uh, coach roof right through into the, the salon, um, which would probably, we weren't there at night, but it probably would make a nice ambiance at night. And having that continuous lighting uh, further extends that feeling of indoor versus outdoor being one and the same. Yep. Nathan, you just going to go check like it out? Okay. You want, you want to pick the room. Yeah, James, keep him off the bed, okay? Yeah. So in this one, if you look down, in our boat, we had this extra hatch that you can get. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. It's so cool? Yeah. He's in the shower. Yeah. He's in the shower. In the shower again. Ow. Are you guys both in the shower? Jesus, is there a toilet back there? No. Yeah. 
<laughs> no. Like, I thought you were going to say, like, back there. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you're silly. Right. No beds. Yeah, don't go on the beds. No, I'm not. Hey. They do have a little window on the other side. They do? Nice. Ooh, the fans are on in this room. Did he go back upstairs with James? I'm still down here. Why are you doing? I'm taking a look. Ooh, that is a big closet. That's cool. I have no idea about there. Yeah. What else is it, James? It's also an uh, emergency. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I don't see fishes. No, I don't see fishes either. I see a monster right there. You're silly. Um, so from there, we'll go down to the uh, starboard hull, which on this boat was a guest configuration. This is a, a mm -hmm. three cabin, uh, like most of the boats at the show. Um, so they would have a, a stateroom forward and a stateroom back with a shared bathroom right at the bottom of the companionway stairs. You walk straight into that door. So that is also your day head um, when you're out sail for guests. And it was a decent little bathroom. It was, it's not huge. It did have a shower stall. Separate and that was a the... wet bath though. It wasn't separate, separate. Uh, that was a wet bath, and it had a strange um, circular piece of plastic underneath the shower I, head I in do, that bathroom. I definitely recall that, and I remember thinking that, because it's some, some in a, I think they had the same disc in the master, too, but it looks For looks kind of cheap. access, yeah. Yeah, it must be a service access to the valves behind there, because there is a valve on the shower knob. But as soon as I walked in, I, I said, oh, yeah, nice fixtures. What is that weird plastic thing? <laughs> it's a big round, you know. Uh, access port uh, right below the, the shower mm -hmm. access. So moving aft, the aft mm -hmm. stateroom is the bigger of the two, um, and it's it's tight. It's uh, definitely not a walk around. Although there's a cut on one corner, so that you can sort of get up onto the, the outboard side. Um, there's a shelf that runs along the inboard side of the bed, and nothing. It's just flat wall on the outboard side. Um, not. I didn't see any spaces to plug anything in up there. There, there was. There so, was. yep. Um, in all of these cabins, unfortunately, it's right next to the door as you walk oh, in. Yeah, not next to the head uh, of so the bed. So, not next though. to the head of the bed. So, you, your phone would be down past your feet. Um, but there were at least charging ports <laughs> and there, outlets there. My so, yeah, I agree. That I, I did see charging ports elsewhere yep. and plugs elsewhere. But, so yeah, you could leave it down at the foot of your bed. But if something chimes or rings, you're climbing out of the bed and this is again not a walk around bed so you're climbing out of the bed to, to get to your phone um, and there's also again no no shelf or no lipper on that it's a flat surface mm -hmm. with those plugs so again if if you're rolling a little bit underway you're gonna have to wedge your phone or something in so it doesn't end up on the floor a sticky pad or something yep. yeah um there's a little bit of storage in there you yep. know there, there was a hanging locker <clears throat> and some uh a space storage underneath the bed. There's, you know, the, the bed on these is forward of the rear bulkhead and the engine is behind the rear bulkhead. Uh, the engines are accessed from the sugar scoops. Uh, so that leaves a pretty big compartment underneath the bed for, for storage of stuff. Uh, but of course you've got to lift the bed top to get some of it. Uh, there is a drawer, I believe, in the front and in the shelf, uh, but there is some storage under there too. And all the storage in this boat too didn't have your typical you know, push um, knob to unlock and then pull the knob out. These all had um, an opening and then there was a, like a clicking tab or yeah, a locking hidden, hidden hidden tab. Yeah. Um, so you have to make sure that you're, you're on the right side of that door or drawer in order to unlatch it and pull it out. So not my favorite I look. think you would get used to it. Maybe. And I've, I've heard that those push button ones stick after a while. Um, so is it as good as a bad? I don't know. They felt a little yeah. flimsy when I was playing yeah. with the plastic latch. It might be one of those things that breaks frequently, but who knows? Uh, but again, they're probably a lot lighter than the 
chrome plated mm -hmm. steel um, or brass, whatever they are, push button ones. Again, this is a pretty light boat um, for its size. We'll, we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, moving forward, um, the forward berth, despite having a narrower hull uh, than the excess, was actually, to my opinion, a lot better. You, you could get into it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. The bulkhead was much further back on the excess. The, the, there's a bulkhead right up against the head of the bed with, a, with an opening that you have to crawl through to get into the bed. On this boat, that bulkhead is a few feet away from the bed, so it gives you a little more ability to get into the bed from the, uh, from the floor. It is a little bit narrower a bed from my <clears throat> just visual appraisal uh, and looking at the top-down uh, deck layouts, especially at the, at the bow end. This, this boat has a very fine uh, bow entry, uh, but overall I think the bed looked like it would be easier to get in and out of. Similar storage space otherwise in the front as it is in the rear. Yep. Um, and there's additional store storage in the hallway as well. A little bit. Not much, but there are there are storage spaces down there as well. Yeah, le less definitely less storage down there than there was on the XS12. The XS12 Correct. has a much wider hull sharing with the lagoons, mm -hmm. um, but not. It wasn't. It's not like no. there was no storage. It was just smaller and fewer. Wow. I'm going to go down the other side. Yeah. 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 Big hanging storage. Hmm. All right. Okay. Can we go back outside to the outside salon, please? Um, back up and uh, over. over and down, mm -hmm. and you walk in, and um, you know, Diane and I were talking a, a little bit before we started recording about the quality of the, or styling, really, of the veneers. Veneer. The quality actually was pretty darn good, in my opinion. Um, and that's supposedly uh, what they can thank the Bavaria Yacht Company for. Uh, all of the interior for this boat apparently is made in Germany and trucked over to France. Uh, the only thing they make there in France is the, the hull and then doing all the finish work. Uh, but all the, the interiors are all CNC cut in a, in a factory in Germany um, and they're well known for making a, a, a fine interior over there. And it, and it shows. It's, it's well put together. The materials may be not as fine as I would expect, but they didn't look bad. Um, Diana didn't care for the styling of the woods they chose. Uh, they, they did, it had sort of like a zebra almost stripe to it. Very fine. Yeah, it was, it, it was, weird. It was definitely <laughs> not even, I, I don't even know if I would consider it like a faux wood green look. Like it just, it, they tried too hard maybe. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it, not my favorite veneer. Um, the coloring of it wasn't bad. Um, but the style of the veneer could have been better, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, almost didn't look like wood when you get up close to it. Yeah. Standing back, you know, in casual look across, yeah, that's a, this this particular boat was in the blonde oak, yep. I think they call it. You can also get them in a walnut, and maybe that would look better, but it would make the boat a lot darker on the inside. Um, but that said, I wanted to segue to that. When you walk into the master, um, I really liked the overall styling of the, of the Naughty Tech. Um, and even though the boat that we had, after looking at some of the uh, marketing materials, didn't have uh, some of the details that I saw on those like leather wraps around the chrome handbars. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come down to the to the master, the the owner's hull, there's a vertical bar there uh, that in the marketing materials has a leather wrap on it. Mm -hmm. The boat that we were on did not have that. It was just this chrome bar, which all, all on its own looks nice, but once you see it wrapped with the leather, you're like, well, yeah, that looks better. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, But that, that is the general style of the interior of this, this boat. Uh, when you walk down into the, the owner's suite, there's a desk straight ahead that has a leatherette uh, top to the vanity desk. You can fold up to become a vanity down for a desk. There are plugs there as well. Yep. So there's USB charging ports as well as a ele regular electric plug. So that was helpful, especially if you're going to use it as a desk, not just a right. makeup station. I thought it would be a, a nice little desk. Um, it, it would, you know, you could put your laptop there with no problem. Mm -hmm. 
plenty of seating space and space. plenty of room to walk behind the person who is mm -hmm. sitting there as well. That owner's suite, despite the reputation of the narrow hulls, felt fairly large. Nowhere near as large mm -hmm. as the excess. The excess felt roomy for a for a small cat. This felt decent. It mm -hmm. felt like it, comfortable. Um, it didn't have as much storage again um, as the as the boat next door. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the places I noticed a lot of that was actually the walls of the uh, inboard side. Um, you know, the excess, the sliding door yeah. that is the door to the owner's suite, suite in the excess had shelves built into it yeah. and, and places to put stuff. There was not that on the on the Naughty Tech. It's just a sheet flat, and you'd you'd start to crowd the room if you tried to do that on the yeah. on the Naughty Tech. If if we added shelves to that 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 room. Probably would have gone from comfortable to cramped, and you know that ease of walking past the the, the desk would have probably been gone. So you do lose some some storage. There is some storage in the walls, uh, inboard, um, but not on that on that sliding mm -hmm. apparatus door. Um, the bed is exactly the same as the the uh, guest side. Uh, it just has no door in front of it. It's wide open. These are a bulkhead arch, but it's a fairly minimal bulkhead. Um, Still no walk around or anything like that. It has yeah. a little bit of a cutout to hop in, but otherwise, yeah. that's Maybe it. Reach the headboard to make the bed or something. Right. Um, and again, no no shelves or pockets or anything for phones, magazine, book, or anything like that, or tablets um, near the bed. Just, just on the inboard. The inboard yep. side did have a shelf. The outboard had nothing, uh, right. but it does have a huge window, which is a which is a big upgrade on the this year's model. Prior year, model years had a single window. This year, on both the forty and the forty six, they've got a double window. I think it's actually one window with a painted slat or reinforcement slat in the middle. Uh, but it, it, when you're looking through it, there's two transparent areas. It looks like a double window, and it's twice as big as it used to be. Uh, front and back. So the forward stateroom, even in the guest yep. cabin, has the same treatment. Huge window, beautiful. You could you imagine sitting there waking up and looking out onto the ocean or bay, wherever you're you're anchored at. That'd be that'd be pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And very bright, especially with the blonde colored wood. Very, very roomy, bright. Uh, lots of light coming from those. There's um, skylights over the master bed in the back, uh, mm -hmm. as well as a porthole in the back to the, uh, I believe that's going to be the stairwell up in front of the comm station. Yes. Uh, moving forward, you get into the master or owner's uh, head and shower. So there's a very nice separate shower in the very far front of the, um, of the bathroom area uh, with some double glass folding doors that, that close it in. Um, I've, I felt these felt to me a bit flimsy, uh, especially there's a, a plastic, clear, transparent plastic meeting bar kind of set up as a seal between them to help keep the water from splashing into the main bathroom. Mm -hmm. Just felt flimsy and cheap. Um, but again, these are probably some of the details that keep the thing light. Um, it's not a big heavy glass thing with a double seal or anything like that. Uh, but it was functional. Mm -hmm. um, and the floor in the in the shower was a nice teak uh, finish. It, was, it had a nice touch to it. Um, does this one have a double basin? I think or it was just the big nope. one that had the double basin. Yeah. Forty six, I think, has a double. So this one has a single basin, um, and that's inboard. And if you turn around, there's a a nice countertop where you could you know do makeup or whatever, and have that huge double window to look out at eye level while you're doing your doing your thing. Um, it's a pretty nice space, really. Um, probably a little lacking in storage for linens in there. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was really just the storage underneath the vanity. Yeah. Um, out into the hallway, you're back into the, the master owner's area. There was a big lo hanging locker, but just one, and, and then you're at the desk again. Yeah, so there's not a lot of hanging locker space in this boat. Again, it's small, it's light, it's... Again, I don't think it would suit someone who's going to live on it full time. But, you know, if you're weekend cruising or vacationing, 
even a few months at a time, I think you can make it work. Uh, Condo yeah. at the pier. Yep. Makes makes sense. Um, weekender, maybe even a week long, you might. But yeah, I think live aboard, you'd have a hard time finding good places for all the things that you'd want to have with you. Right. You'd have to live really minimally, I think. Yep. Um, That's yeah. the review for inside. So what do you think? Very nice. Yeah, right. Hey, are you going to go drive again? Okay. <laughs> can, oh, you're gonna have him check the motor? Do I want to get up there with you? Yeah. Not right this second. Another guy. Yeah, James is driving. Are you going up front? Yeah. Okay. It has huge, as the anchor is in the middle towards the front, and yep. it has huge storage spaces. We keep our electrical bikes there and everything. So oh, wow. feel free to open up to check it out if you like. Okay. This is the handrail. Oh, it's not a very good one. What are they? Storage lockers. Oh my god, they're enormous. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a trampoline. What did you expect? Hmm. There are different scoops in the front for air. Yeah. All right, Nathan. Okay, go around the back. You gonna go that way or are you gonna go back this way? Come on, boys, this way with me, please. Or you can go with Dad. One of the two. Come on, Nathan. Okay. Go back the way you came. Very carefully. Try not to walk on the windows, kiddo. There you go. Good job. Yeah. Can you get down on your bum and scooch down? Hold on to the... So back up. Back up out onto the top deck. Um, and then we'll come back and talk about the specs in the, in the final review. Mm -hmm. uh, top deck uh, seemed really nice. Um, the stays and shrouds on this compared to the excess are a lot further forward. Uh, so at first mm -hmm. glance, I was concerned about being able to manage your way forward on the weather decks. And um, you see a picture of me actually walking by and I'm about six feet. And I, I barely have to lean to one side. I mean, just barely have to lean to, for the, the, the shrouds to, to touch my shoulders. So not a problem getting forward. Uh, the boat we were on had a small handrail mm -hmm. at the um, point where you step up onto the, the weather deck, but it was only about four feet long. Mm -hmm. Like the other cats we saw, this had a rain gutter that you could put your hand in and walk along. A little bit easier to get to than the uh, the excess, that it was closer to the outside edge. Um, it was still high, though. It was so high. So the, the roof line on this was high. So and those tall windows. Yeah. Yep. And when you get to the front, uh, that, that kind of goes away because of the yes. slope of the windows. Yep. Um, one thing that I also noticed as we were going up is all the lines are run on the weather deck, exposed. Mm -hmm. um, not really an issue while you're walking from the helm station forward. <laughs> Says you. Because <laughs> uh, they're, you know, they're tight to the, to the saloon window mm -hmm. joint. Um, they're, they're nestled in did not have uh, recessed hatches, so the hatches were raised. So you'd have to step over those anyway, uh, or at least be aware of them. But when you get to the front and where the windows start to curl in, um, the lines run up to a deck organizer that sticks out a good almost foot mm -hmm. uh, into the walkway. Yeah. And so either you, you, know, you keep, keep your, <laughs> your wits about you around that. You don't want your toes underneath the, the lines and you don't want to stub your toes on the deck organizer either um, but it's it's there's plenty of room to walk up there so long as you were aware of that 
Um, go all the way forward is a beautiful trampoline, nice big, uh, big trampoline with a, an interesting detail where the top cap uh, extends over the fasteners for the trampoline. So you don't see any of the fasteners. Mm -hmm. um, so those aren't going to be hot or sharp uh, when you're walking up there. I don't think it really changes any of the trip hazard up there. Some no. some people have suggested. I mean, it's it's actually something to get your toes caught under. <laughs> so. Yeah, because these trampolines did give more than some of them. So I, I don't know if it's just the type of trampoline. This had more of so. a traditional trampoline feel and look to them. So you, as you're stepping on it, you're really kind of dipping down into that trampoline. Even the mm -hmm. kids were dipping down. Um, but it did have nice seating. Um, so it had cushions out there. There was a console in the center as well with some cup holders. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to sit there while you're cruising or even if you're at anchor, you've got a nice place to put your beverage while you're sitting or while you're sailing. Uh, but again, that trampoline... In my opinion, I, I prefer to have a little less give, um, especially if I'm up there, you know, trying to take yeah. care of something while we're underway. I noticed two different general categories of trampolines that, as we were walking on boats. And this one was what I'll kind of refer to as the woven rope type trampoline. Uh, so it's a mesh and net uh, that's made out of woven strand in opposite directions. Uh, we did step on a few boats and I can't remember off the top of my head which exact ones they were, but they had a more synthetic um, trampoline. It was still perforated, so you had holes that were going through it, but there were squares cut into a, a canvas, probably a synthetic plastic canvas of some sort. And those seemed much more rigid. You could step on with almost no give, whereas these traditional ones that were more net, you, you know, your feet are zagging in and da dancing around um, but not a real big deal um, what was nice about this one compared to the access was the access to the roof mm -hmm. um, there's two very nice steps on each side of the mast and the mast is uh, very far forward on the on the top of the roof to the point where you'd step up and immediately grab the mast and i would imagine we'd have a handle put there on the front of the mast to grab onto uh, but there's plenty of junk there to grab. Yeah, but there's nothing to clip onto either up there. No, but if so, you had a rail, you could, you could clip onto that. Um, so, but easy, one, one, two steps, you're up and easy. Uh, no climbing onto your knees kind of thing to get up there. Mm -hmm. The uh, dual rear helms keeps the boom nice and low. I mean, it's probably at almost knee level uh, when you're standing on the roof. So easy to service the main mm -hmm. reefing, whatever you need to do. Um, yeah, because this is not, this is stored in the bag. It's yep. it's not a mast furling mainsail. Um, it did have a self-tacking jib, though. It did. So. Um, it did have a self-tacking jib, and the, and the unit we were on had the optional bowsprit for a uh, Jenniker, Screecher, whatever you, you chose to put on there. Yep. Uh, they have quite a few options. Um, the... No solar panels installed on this cat either, but there's plenty of roof space up there. Or just you could add a ton if you, you need. You could add I'm them. I'm sure that's an option. Yep. Uh, I didn't go through the options list in detail, but there's there's quite a few options, uh, including you know things like water makers. Um, so uh, I think that's about it for the general go over. Mm -hmm. um, go through the specs real quick, um, just to compare it. Uh, We'll compare it to the XS12 next door. Uh, it's probably not the closest thing to compare it to, uh, but it is, they're, you know, they're clearly going after the same people, at least XS are. Um, the layouts are very similar. You know, you've got these rear dual helms um, targeted as a, a cruising cat, the low uh, boom, uh, same cabin layout, um, but there's some big differences between them. Uh, so Naughty Tech has been known as a performance cruising cat. Uh, they, they reportedly are a much quicker boat, and there's some reasons for that. So in general, the Naughty Tech is actually a little bit wider overall. It's about six inches wider than the XS, uh, but it's also five feet taller. Uh, the mast height is quite a bit more, um, and it's, it's a little bit above intercoastal waterway limit of 65 feet. I think it's 65 and a half feet. Yeah, 65 feet, nine inches. Uh, so it's a, it's a little bit tall. So you, 
uh, <clears throat> are either going to have to watch for low tides, etc., uh, or find a way around a couple of the bridges. Naturally, the, the mast is taller, so the, the sail area is probably going to be a lot larger, and it is a fair amount larger. Um, but there's, it's hard to compare the two sail for sail because they, they all have different choices. <clears throat> and they're not extremely well documented on some of the others. But uh, I, I gave the excess the benefit of the doubt that you got their um, larger sail package uh, and compared it to that. So if I, if I did that, the main on the uh, Naughty Tech is 14% larger uh, at 678. But the jib is a bit smaller. The jib is 14% smaller, uh, 301 versus I think it was 344. Um, and I think that may be because I think the mast may be a little bit further forward on the Naughty Tech. And I think that may be because they were trying to push the uh, push that cabin forward and make that rear space open. And that would make mm -hmm. sense why the jib would be a bit smaller. Um, the, uh, the total area overall, taking those two, it's about four and a half percent. So it's not a huge difference if you're just counting those. Mm -hmm. um, but where it comes to a, a really big difference is the weight. So the Naughty Tech is 21% lighter than the XS12. That's, it's almost, I mean, it's just barely shy of two tons difference in weight uh, between the two. And that makes a big difference. So with narrower, much finer uh, entry and exit hulls, finer keels and a lighter boat uh, as most people say uh, the naughty tech is going to be much more lively to sail uh, a more proper sailing boat sail a little better to wind um, that, that's the real big difference on these two boats um, the uh, tankage the uh, fresh water is quite a bit bigger on the naughty tech uh, 114 gallons versus 79 um, and the, the black water wasn't published uh, anywhere that I could find for the Naughty Tech, uh, but I did find some um, chartering uh, outfits that had published that it had uh, two, basically one one holding tank per head at 15.8 gallons uh, versus the reported 42 for the excess. So if you're uh, at a at a dock uh, or not out to sea, you know, at least not out Far to the open ocean, <laughs> uh, you're going to be looking for pump out stations more frequently with the, with the naughty tech. Um, and maybe that's part of the, you know, the overall design of this is like we said, it's more of a, a, a weekend condo on the pier than it is a, an open ocean <clears throat> long, long term sailing. Uh, it, it's certainly got a blue water heritage and pedigree. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the salesperson that we talked to, uh, she herself actually uh, and her husband who own Aero Yacht have, have owned this boat uh, and still own an Audi Tech. They just moved up to the 46. Uh, and she said that they, they had no problem doing long passages on it. Uh, in fact, he. With kids. With kids. Uh, he had delivered some of the boats from France uh, on their own bottoms. Uh, so, so, not, not a problem. Uh, but again, long term, if you live aboard, uh, it could be a little irritating. Maybe. Um, so two last things, uh, one being that this boat is entirely foam cord. Uh, there is no balsa in the hull or the top deck on the Naughty Tex, uh, and we like this. Um, having a balsa cord boat now with some rot spots, uh, and you can find plenty on the internet, uh, examples of, of rotting. Uh, now, modern construction, they've done a lot to reduce this as a possibility with uh, good resin infusion, etc. But, uh, you know, nothing's ever perfect. And if something does get in there, I'd rather it not be rotting away. Uh, so foam is a, is a great solution for that. And modern foams uh, are capable of outperforming balsa in almost every way, except for maybe thermal stability at high temperatures. Uh, but they're still quite good. Uh, I think the foam used by Naughty Tech has a uh, thermal distortion temperature of like 280 degrees. It's, it's pretty damn hot, even if a uh, dark painted hull deck. Um, and then the last being price. Price is pretty nice. Um, you know, it's not uncommon to see, you know, custom and performance cats uh, well over a million dollars. Uh, the Naughty Tech 40 Open starts in the mid to low 40s uh, as a saleable boat. 
Uh, of course, optioned for uh, most people, it's probably going to end up in the low 500s. This is a little bit more money than the um, XS12. I think that's reported to come in at around um, 380 as a starting price and then optioned probably in the 480s. But um, I think there's a lot to be found on the Nautitech that you don't get in the XS12. So yeah, so those are the major differences that we found. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I think I liked the boat, and the more and more we look at these, the more I like them, despite some of their shortcomings. Um, we're going to be reviewing the 46 next. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, we had some technical difficulties, and we don't have a whole lot of our own footage <clears throat> uh, from that boat. Uh, so we're going to have to piece together what we do have and combine that with some of the uh, promotion materials uh, to, to do a review on that, but uh, six feet, as it turns out, makes a huge difference. And almost all of the things that I found wrong with the 40 from a, a gut feel sort of get fixed with that boat. Uh, <laughs> it just feels like a bigger, uh, better solution. Um, so, so stay tuned. We'll, we'll do that one next. Thank you. All right.